Parish, a special welcome to our guests and visitors, as well as our faithful members. Let us pray the Memorare, which can be found on page 331, for the sick whose names appear in our parish bulletin, in our parish book of intentions, and the names we hold in our hearts. Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer us. Amen. Striving to be a faithful community, united as one holy parish family, please stand and welcome Christ present in those around you. Let us begin our celebration by singing number 553, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Sisters and brothers, as we gather together to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins as we seek God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you forgive sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring all of us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or postule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron the priest or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard he shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean. Since he is in fact unclean, he shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The men went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. A very famous violinist by the name of Peter Cropper was to play a very special concert in Finland. And it made it even more special because he was to use a priceless 285-year-old Stradivarius violin, the king of violins. The instrument was lent to the musician by the England Royal Academy of Music. Well, on the night of the performance, 
a nightmare happened. As the famed violinist walked onto the stage, he tripped and fell. The violin broke into pieces. Peter Cropper flew back to London the next day in the state of shock. A master craftsman agreed to try to repair the violin. He finally got it back together and then came the dreaded moment, the moment of truth. What would the violin sound like now? Peter took up the violin and started to play and people could not believe their ears. Not only did the violin sound excellent, but it actually seemed better than before. In the months ahead, Peter Cropper took the violin on a world tour and night after night, the violin everyone thought was ruined forever drew standing ovations. The violin story is a beautiful illustration of what happened to the leper in today's gospel. As you could tell by the first reading, people were deathly afraid of lepers. No figure was more pathetic than a leper. No one went near a leper for fear they would catch the communicable disease. Not Jesus. Jesus reached out to this pathetic man. He touched him and the man was healed. The story of the violin and the story of the leper contain an important message for all of us. They illustrate something that happens over and over in life. Some big tragedy strikes our life. Many of us have experienced that. If not, you will. A loved one dies. A friend betrays us. An accident leaves a child an invalid. A father loses his job. A mother becomes an alcoholic. A spouse is unfaithful. Tragedies like this strike all the time. But when misfortune strikes and we're overwhelmed with grief and anguish, when we're crushed, we're crushed as the leper was when he contacted that disease, we're plunged into a state of shock as Peter Cropper was when he broke that violin. But these stories tell us something very important. They tell us that no tragedy is so terrible that we cannot survive it. Whenever we think our life is ruined forever, we need only turn to Jesus. Like the master craftsman who fixed the violin, Jesus can repair a broken life. St. Paul was no stranger to tragedy. He summed up the tragedies of his life in this way. As he wrote to the Corinthians, we are often troubled, he says, but not crushed. Sometimes in doubt, but never despair. Though badly hurt at times, we're not destroyed. For this reason, we never become discouraged. We know that all things work out for those who love God. We know that all things work out for those who love God. St. Paul points out that no accident is so disastrous that we can't repair it, as was the violin. 
And no tragedy is so devastating that we can't rise from it like the leper. But here is a very important point. Even though Jesus might not choose to repair our lives totally, he can use our broken condition to make of us something more beautiful and more precious than we were before. Listen to this beautiful prayer. It was found in the pocket of a dead soldier. Lord, I ask for health that I might do great things. I was given infirmity that I might do better things. I asked for riches that I might be happy. I was given poverty that I might be wise. I asked for power that I might have the praise of men. But I was given weakness that I might feel the need for God. I got nothing I asked for, but everything I hoped for, almost despite myself. My unbroken prayers were answered. I'm among all men most richly blessed. We stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light. True God, true God, be God and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us then and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in the Father's love and mercy, we now bring him our prayers 
and petitions. For the church, that she may mirror in her actions Jesus' compassion and healing mission, we pray to the Lord. For healing of nations, that God will bring an end to war, violence, and terrorism, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, that they may look to Christ as a model for their love, cherishing and respecting one another as he desires, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations, may the Lord bless those who are discerning priesthood and consecrated life with generous and open hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, medical professionals, and health care workers who continue the healing ministry of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this world day of prayer for the sick, we pray for those with physical, mental, or emotional illness. May they experience God's love, compassion, and healing touch. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for those who have died, marked with the sign of faith, especially Judy Shushva Rella, and for George Lepore, whom we pray for in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Tender and merciful God, we come before you in prayer, asking and seeking healing and wholeness that we may continue your son's mission of compassion for all people in need. We offer our prayer with confidence through Christ our Lord. We have a second collection today, the Black and Indian Mission Collection. Please join in the offertory hymn, <clears throat> number 436, O Sacrament Most Holy.
and sisters. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we are not only experienced the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the new fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your and profess your Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Please offer each other some sign of Christ.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. We pray our spiritual communion prayer for our shut-ins who cannot be with us. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Communion hymn will be number 356, Ubi Caritas.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. St. Michael, The annual Super Bowl of Caring Drive is underway, which benefits the food pantry. Please consider participating by making a monetary contribution or donating some of the most needed items. Please see the bulletin for more information. All suborders can be picked up in the social hall after mass. There are some extras for those who are interested. This is your last chance to sign up for the Sweetheart Dinner Fun Night this coming Saturday. Sign up sheets are on the windowsills here in the church. Hope to see you there. The United States Conference of Catholic Bishops Synod team is preparing for the interim stage synthesis. As part of this, each diocese has been asked to host additional discussions on themes derived from the initial phase of the Synod. The Diocese of Harrisburg is holding an online session via Zoom on Wednesday, February 21st at 6 p.m. All are invited to participate in this session. For planning purposes, please register online at www.hbgdiocese.org slash synod. This Wednesday is Ash Wednesday and the beginning of Lent. We will have Mass with the distribution of ashes at 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. We invite you to take copy, a copy of the bulletin home so that you will be aware of all that is happening in our parish, the deanery, and our diocese. The Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace. Please join in the recessional hymn number 392, Lord, You Give the Great Commission.